So, welcome again to the last lecture of this uh, first week. Uh, let, let me pick up from where I left, how the brain evolves and how the species have evolved from motor to emotional to thinking brain, which is us neocortex, which is the latest to develop in evolution. Uh, the, <coughs> the individual brain evolves from in the first month of uh, in the womb in utero and uh, it is like so let let me come to that the, the basic questions which we asked is why why does it need need so many neurons when it the, when the brain is evolving okay this is what i told so between Genetics and epigenetics as I mentioned, 50 percent genes go on to make the brain. This period within the womb, 42nd to 108th day, most of the areas of the brain are already there, they are only forming. So, after that relocation will be very difficult. Cells are being formed and at the same time lot of cell death is happening. So, out of all the cells which are formed, 50 percent of them die. So, imagine how many cells would have been formed and most neurons are in the place in the brain at the time of birth. Now, take some time to understand this. Anyway, do not bother about it too much. It is like a small cell one cell is sperm meets over, then they divide two cells, then two to four, four to all these cells are totipotent. Totipotent means they can form any type of cell in the body. As the growth occurs, they become pluripotent. Some of them can form some specialized cell, some of them can form some. So, in this ball which is called a zygote, which later on becomes fetus, on the top of it appears a plate, which is called a neural plate. This neural plate divides into such a form that on the top is the brain and then spinal cord. Now, imagine a, imagine a circle, from the center of the circle, these cells are formed and from the center they move on to the periphery of the circle in the rim. It is formed here, it is formed here and it moves to this, migrates, it just migrates. So, each cell which divides initially is called a progenitor. Progenitor gives rise to a progenitor initially, it is a symmetric division. Later on each progenitor divides gives to and rise to another progenitor and a neuron and each neuron from the center moves on to the those six layers if you remember. So, the earliest cell will remain in layer 6, the later cell will move on to layer 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 and as they move they also start getting specialized under the influence of there is no light which is reaching there, but there is sound which is reaching the womb. So, the, the fetus starts hearing very early, but it is not becoming a hearing neuron under the influence of sound. It already has a capacity to be there to hear. If it moves to the auditory area, it is there to hear. If it moves to the visual area, it is there to receive the pattern of the image. If it is in motor area, it is there to fire and create a motor thing. So, there are 50 type of neurons which come up in various areas and there is a cell called glial cells. Glial cells are many more than neurons. 
glial cells are like a packing material glial cells also f help to form what you call a myelin sheet which we'll talk about over the axon glial cells are there to keep the electrochemical balance of the brain correct the brain is largely filled with water so water 50% body is water water is very important in the brain actually beyond a certain water threshold brain will shrink or if there is more water the brain will stop functioning so there is a critical balance of everything of sodium potassium salt glucose it uses energy it is a warm moist structure but it uses 30 percent of the energy of the body to keep functioning all its life so what happens is a neuron in layer 4 will function as something which takes input in the initial few days if we replace suppose we take a neuron from layer 6 and put it in layer 4 it will start functioning as layer 4 but only in the very initial few days of its migration after few days it will not and that is why it has been seen what we call neural plasticity the neuron can take over function that if in the critical period of migration and development if suppose a neuron from occipital area is taken and put it into the area of hearing it will take up that function so if you take a neuron from one area and put it to another it will take up that function but only in the critical phase of development not after that so most of the brain areas are in place called 40 second between 40 second to 108 the day what is left after that is forming the association so if you if remember there was something called association area in one of the slides i show you showed you it is so one area is hearing one area is seeing one area is moving one area is sensing how do they unite they unite by rest of the connections called association areas temporal is with parietal parietal is with occipital occipital with frontal these are association areas now association areas start developing so neuronal migration has happened the dna and protein the signal the growth external factors at that time so that means in the womb it is very important that uh, the womb is protected some of the genetic mutations like down syndrome like other syndromes can happen which leads to disability and uh, the rest of the things but a lot of epigenetics happen in mother's stress increases the cortisol hormone level one of the hormones in the body which uh, manages stress in the fluid which covers the fetus that itself can alter the alter the brain formation so direct hurt to brain where brain structure is damaged can happen with genes but a lot more damage especially with psychiatry and neurology happens because of epigenetic factors or maybe genetic factors and that is the problem of this formation of the cells layer by layer these layers when they get disrupted what we don't know is we, what we don't know is also I, I'm, I'm just throwing a thought it because the brain has a certain orientation and the neurons have to go into certain orientation it is the electromagnetic field which may be also orienting it so there is a geometry of the arrangement of cells in the columns and mini column if this geometry is disrupted for some some reason then probably what happens is that the functioning also gets altered and i'll give you example uh, very soon now after once these cells are in place then how do the dendrites i showed you the dendrites which are the antenna how do these synapses form these synapses start forming by two three things one is a spontaneous firing as the chem chemistry alters there is a spontaneous firing but this firing is not like the eeg waves which we'll be talking about in the next week it is like spikes you know what spike of current is but each spikes leads to current passing from one to the other leading to a synapse formation chemical synapse neurotransmitters are so i showed you the synapse so there is a small gap how does it happen though that electrical activity converts to what you call a chemical activity chemical synapses form after 
in the in the very soon in the third fourth month within the womb sound so we don't know whether abhimanyu's story is true in mahabharata because now it is very well proven that if you play music the synapse formation and the fetus responds to it sound is already reaching sound is already reaching through the vibration of the mother's tummy and that sound triggers formation of synapses between the neurons light we don't know but this triggers of and this continues till after birth and after birth the child, the new, newborn is already participating in its growth because what does it do it suddenly take a gasp oxygen goes in and what is let out is a cry which is a motor act so as it acts the environment the mother or the caretaker responds to it by feeding by doing other things that reciprocal thing starts forming synapses then within the first month of growth smile social smile movement the movement starts in the within the womb also but there is a spontaneous jerking when you would have seen it when mother say i feel that it is kicking it is actually kicking what happens the first the motor movement happens that means the neuron has fired maybe from the motor area but after few firing like this first the movement happens neurons fire movement happen neurons fire after few firing like this, the brain starts controlling this movement that's how it evolves lot of sound goes in neurons fire sound goes in neurons fire but then neurons start discriminating between the sound surprisingly at the time of birth a normal healthy newborn can differentiate between the the voice of father and mother this is a very very surprising thing but it is there because by that time the brain has already learned to play do the fourier of and the frequency analysis of the various pitch and which is going in its brain is already highly functional at that time as in the first 2 3 months lot of activity increase it evokes response from the environment environment does something to it this response and that's how synapses start forming and this is what i initially told you so what is important is that we should understand and that is the reason why people can't be very very objective you know what being objective is say that okay why are you reacting you be objective think into this situation don't carry past into it all that is very well said but all that requires hell lot of training because your basic neurons are not firing that way your basic neurons are embedded in the environment so much that it is very difficult to really detach from it it requires training plus if you look at it your basic network which is formed in the first 3 months or in the first few months of life is essentially for survival for your safety your cries for your discomfort discomfort or for food so your basic networks always keep evaluating any stimulus which comes on the basis of threat and survival first once that is done then you move on if you again as as let us go back to the first thing which i said the psychology has given lot of definitions we are still not away from that if you know abraham maslow and maslow's pyramid it shows the basic first thing which you have to do is basic security food and hunger once you do that then you move on to security and then achievement and then finally self actualization so all self actualization happens when there lot of other parameters and basic networks are satisfied if we translate this so psychosocial growth to networks of the brain so networks itself are operating from very very basic survival network to higher complexity now there may be a gandhi i don't know we did not preserve gandhi's head because probably we were not so scientifically oriented at that time but i'm sure gandhi gandhi was one person who jumped all these things he had no security for food never bothered money but he still was self actualized and there have been people like buddha who has, who have done it so in in the history of human race there have been few people who have really done it but 
majority of the human and you don't have to go far you just look at our own life when we are secure when we are well fed we talk a lot of good philosophy theory i give a example that uh, lot of people who are telling you about getting detached and detachment should practice See, detachment is such a difficult thing because how can you get detached when your own brain firing is so attached to the survival and to the environment now all this is it's like how many people who are giving you all this sermons it's a very interesting thing which i suddenly thought not to disrespect anybody if somebody is giving a sermon get details and all you tell them there is a sniper sir and you don't have a bulletproof jacket no security somebody may really shoot you now give you a sermon about detachment first reaction will be fear so if you look at your own life suppose you are waiting for a result and you know the result will come on 3rd june maybe of your child or of yourself you know it will come on 3rd june but unnecessarily anxiety will keep fiddling every now and then you will keep thinking sometimes it appears that if as if our basic networks have evolved from the jungle from the predator because there will always a risk of life at that time when they were hunters all the security which we have created in our houses and all that all that is a much later phenomena man lived in a huge danger of getting eliminated from illness from predators from being a prey from wars from the self destruction from fire from natural calamities we all still have those fears and lot of things which we do in our life is essentially to eliminate that fear and one has to just examine your own life you want a good career because you want to earn good money because the assumption is good money can give you security faith when you are helpless what do you look at god so god has been replaced by money money has been replaced by power something so you need power why do people need power because they think okay fine gives me a sense of sort of security imagine the first man who would have looked at a tsunami coming to him or a lightning coming he would have got scared that fear is so entrained in the network of the brain maybe genes as i said the first gene would have thought multiply and survive it never goes away most of our efforts are just to eliminate that fear and that is how the brain has continuously learned to re- keep responding to the environment and reacting to threatful situation once there is no threatful situation then you move on to the other things like if i'm i'm sitting here and suddenly there is a spark of light or there is a sh- short circuit here i know i just have two more slides i can tell and finish i you think i'll do it no because my only fear will be they should not fall on me so brain first will fire and keep you activated to keep you safe and then so on so forth and that is why a lot of uh, now you can ask me why don't you get a answer why don't people change in spite of all right from christ to everybody telling because most people they are their context is the immediate immediate means one immediate physical survival second anticipation and prediction and that is what makes us different from any animals animals did not have the capacity to anticipate and predict they can anticipate and predict only when they get a sensation from the environment like a deer he may smell or he may feel that the lion is coming only then the deer will run human beings can anticipate that okay if you go to this area you may have a lion so you will go protected and all that we can anticipate and predict our future okay if you don't earn money if you don't have a house where you live so what we have developed is anticipation and prediction of the future this separates humans from lot of other animals so it's a ongoing process through adolescence and the nervous system is very plastic as i said experience plays a key role when something goes wrong teratogens drugs of abuse chemicals 
household chemical. So, environment largely directs synaptic network formation or is it a basic network template with response to external stimuli and just modifies? Now, this is what is the important question. Environment experience sensations, are they acting on the nerve growth or synaptic formation or is it that over millions of years our brain network is already there to ready for to fire on a maybe multiple potentialities. Like multiple like in quantum mechanics you have possibilities, probabilities. So, there may be a multiple probabilities in which a brain network is existing depending on what environmental stimulus comes in that is like almost like a wave collapse or and it materializes the rest of the potentialities repeatedly once, twice, thrice, ten, multiple times if the same circuit goes on and on that becomes established in the form of synaptic formation. But environment just utilized what was already existing. Now, this is the big question because possibly this, this is the truth the second because uh, if environment is the only factor which directs synaptic growth and behavioral patterns and all that, then the similarities would not exist, then it would be entirely different. But over certain layers of behavior most of the human beings are the same. So, possibly we all are born with a basic network template which responds to the external stimuli, environment just triggers and brings out those frameworks of realities. So, this is a type of uh, stages of development prenatal conception till birth is a rapid physical growth, infancy motor development, childhood abstract reasoning, adolescent 13 to 20 years identity creation, judgment etcetera. And so, this part adolescent this you think directly related to maturation of prefrontal. I told you the central executive network which has prefrontal cortex which makes judgments and insight. This area is the last to develop. In fact, thinking brain if you ask me in that sense of wisdom maturity does not develop before 20. So, this whole fallacy of the society of asking kids to think, their brain is not mature enough, their brain is not mature enough to think that, but they will be impulsive, they will be bit of attentional deficit, they will be fidgety, they will be taking irrational decision, because normally around 13 hormonal changes puberty starts that also that is one of the critical periods. So, this whole tiff with adolescents and parents is probably not based on biology. Thinking starts in the true sense of judge, true judgment around 20, but societies are such that we want our kids to think very early in life, which I do not think will be a very, very smart thing to do. And it also is with the myelination, myelination of neurons uh, as they now that imaging shows, we will talk about imaging, the lack of myelination leads to a lot of uh, immaturity of the thing. Uh, this is one of the stages of development, we will see the how the whole thing looks like. Uh, okay, so, I will wrap up this week's uh, lecture at this. Uh, basically, so I hope you got an idea of what the structure does. And when we are talking of the, the structure in the sense of that whether structure is primary or the function is primary. I think in human body or in biology at least, both have evolved together. Why does brain have one more last thing before I wrap up? I asked about the wiring. Why does brain have so many neurons? It could have done with less. My guess is because while evolution, all these neurons have evolved by taking up data from the environment information, right. So, to survive, 
brain, human brain has grown so much in complexity that it requires everything in the brain to be present. So, that once something comes, it nothing should be missing. That is one reason for neurons. Second, that is also one reason why do you see this garai and sulci? Because how do you pack 10 to the power 10, 11 neurons? So, this folding in the brains gives a more surface area and helps you packing. Now, why do you want to pack 10 to the power 11 neurons? That is a wiring engineering problem. Because transmission from one point to another has to be pretty fast. Transmission, if it takes 0 0.5 to 120 meter per second, which is the natural speed, when we talk of physiology, we will talk about this. So, how do you increase the transmission? Because transmission, fast transmission has to be for a faster response to save yourself or to act. How do you do it? Either you make the, if you make it thick, the transmission will be faster, but thicker neurons will not pack. So, thicker neurons will mean less neurons, less neurons will mean less data sets, which will mean less information, which brain does not want. So, what do you do? You have, so you do not increase the volume, you have more number of neurons, right, as I interface with the world one and inter neurons, if you can posit lot of connections, then the speed changes and not in a linear sense of it, you can put it in a sort of a network. So, dendrites have hundreds of it, with antenna like thing, exons have hundreds of it. So, as I said, 1000 to 10,000 of uh, connections, that gives a huge network. So, now what is brain doing? In, if you ask me to just summarize till now, we know brain takes information, it is almost digitizes, right. In a logarithmic function, you can see how the visual thing goes in integrates, distributes, like in vision, if you as it a small signal electromagnetic signal which comes from the retina as it goes deeper into the brain, the receptive field increases because lot of imagery comes into it, image formation is different. So, integrates and differentiates, first it differentiates the external sensation, then later in the deeper structures it integrates to give a composite image, parallelly distributed, hierarchical decision, parallelly distributed because so many inputs have to be integrated. So, it has to be parallelly distributed. No brain function really shuts up at any point of time. Neurons are at rest, but they are always in the ready, readiness and the potential to fire at no point of time. So, when we talk about the physiology and when we talk about the future experiment to study brain, one big problem is, although we, I told you how to study brain and all that, but that is all again peripheral at times. What is a brain at rest? What is a brain at rest basically? Uh, that, that, that is one thing and the biggest problem with studying brain, which is especially with consciousness is we are trying to study brain with brain itself. Like we are standing within the painting and then trying to study the painting. That is the biggest hurdle in at least understanding the higher functions. But bodily physical processes go in making the mind is amply clear. Uh, from next, uh, next week we will try to cover how the processes work and then networks and so on and so forth. Thank you.